Great song right there, and that, John, was uh, one of the classic yeah. songs by the great Bob Wills, one called The Prosperity Special right there. Hope it brings us some, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good music right there from John England and Gene Pappy Merritts. Let me now introduce to, uh, you to two men who have already been on the show, but that was about four years ago. I can't believe we've been on the air for <laughs> so long. One of them um, has uh, played and sung with Loretta Ling, Andy Griggs, Carrie Newcomer. He has performed at the Waldorf Astoria, Billy Bob's in Fort Worth, Texas, and even the Royal Albert Hall in London. That's quite a mixture right there. <laughs> he leads the Western Swingers, a fine Western Swing band, Bob Wells style. I'm talking about John England. Howdy, Anton. How you doing? Really good. It's good to have you here, and it's also good to listen to the Prosperity Special to start off Music City USA, huh? Seemed like a timely number, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> well, yeah. We, we'll get into that a little later. Uh, now let me. Uh, you know, Anton. Since we were here four years ago, things got a lot of prettier, a lot prettier around here. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, girl, Aaron. Yeah. Well, I've always knew. I always knew you were a charming fellow. <laughs> <laughs> now let me introduce to you to legend of Nashville, Tennessee. This man has played with country greats like Bill Monroe and Roy Acuff, Patsy Cline, Benny Martin. He has appeared on legendary WWVA Jamboree in Willing, West Virginia. He was featured for 24 years on Country Music USA. He has performed for Preston's Nixon and Ford. It is an honor to welcome to the radio show Gene Pappy Merritts. Howdy, Anton. How's it going this morning? It's going great, and it's uh, even better now that I see the two of you right there, <laughs> just in front of me. All right, yeah. <laughs> well, they... Um, now give me back them donuts. <laughs> 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 they just put out a, a new record I have in my hand right here. John England and the Western Swingers opened that gate, and we certainly did open the gate here in the studio for John England and Gene Pappy Merritts. We're really happy that you're here with myself and with... Cowgirl Aaron. Yeah. Hey, we're happy to be here, yeah. Well, At my age, I'm happy to be anywhere. There you go. Well, um, before we uh, play the first uh, 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 the title track from this album, Open That Gate, which we really enjoy, and uh, we'll talk about that uh, just coming up. Um, I was wondering, John, how uh, did you start to get interested in Western swing music? You know, Western swing music has got a combination of so many different things to it, you know, and uh, it combines so many things that I've always loved since I was a kid and started playing music. It's got some of the jazz and the blues and, uh, of course, the country music element of it and the old uh, uh, old fiddle music, swing, right? Swing music. And, yeah, I always liked the swing bands like Count Basie and Duke Ellington mm -hmm. and the uh, dance bands like Benny Moten and Benny Goodman. I was I was a uh, swing nerd in high school, I guess. <laughs> and uh, then you, know, you get older, you start to like country music a little bit better, and uh, I sure did. And uh, uh, come to Nashville, and Pappy said, "You know, Western swing band, we should get that going." <laughs> right. so. We're sure glad you did. Well, yeah, Pappy, do do you remember how the two of you met? Yes, I do. Of course, I I first met John at Opryland. He he was a, a sub guitar player. At Opryland. Subpar, he means. <laughs> and, uh, no, no. Good. Sub, sub guitar player. That's when I first met him. And then later on, uh, he asked me to play for him one night. We were playing downtown. Should I mention the place? or? Well, it's some other place that wasn't as good as Robert's West. Right. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we were playing together, and it sounded so good, and we were playing some good swing tunes. And so I said to John, uh, what do you think about let us get a good Western swing band together? And he said, yeah, let's try it. I said, I think I can get us a place to play. And he said, well, let's do it. So I asked Jesse, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, we make it to July. It'll be eight years of right. playing every Monday night at Roberts Western. Right. right. That's so. great. And that's every Monday night from 6, six to, to 10. 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you also have a special um, um, schedule for the winter. Is that right? It's usually 8 to It usually is, but this winter we're just sticking with it. You're so, sticking uh, with it's, it? It's, uh, everybody gets home at a reasonable time. <laughs> All right. 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 Well, downtown at Roberts Western World and <coughs> the historic Lower Broadway of Nashville, Tennessee, every Monday night at uh, Roberts Western World from 6 to 10. That sure is a uh, fantastic gig. We really like to go down there whenever we can, and, you know, we really appreciate your playing. 
Yeah, thanks. And you know, we love it. Well, there's a lot of Vanderbilt students and uh, uh, fa uh, staff that come down to Roberts. Mm -hmm. and, right. Uh, uh, of course, that's one of the things, every, uh, living in Nashville, you know, a lot of those places are really strictly for tourists, but Robert mm -hmm. seems to have a mix of locals and tourists, and uh, uh, we're always glad when those Vanderbilt people come in. Yes, <laughs> we are. Yes. All right, well, we're going to start talking about uh, Open That Gate, but uh, before we do that, how about playing that uh, title track from this album, one that uh, John wrote, so we're going to let him introduce it. How about that? All right. Are we playing this one live, or are you going to turn we're, this we're, no. we'll, we'll play it on the record. Okay. All right. Then you get to hear the rest of the band. Tommy Hannum on the steel, who plays a great ride on this one. Uh, David Spiker. Everybody gets to play a little solo. Mm -hmm. uh, David Spiker on the bass, and Neil Stretcher on the piano, and Walter Hartman kicks it off on his drums. Here goes John England and all the Western Swingers. Open that gate. Music City, USA, here on WRVU, Nashville, John England and the Western Swingers. And Open That Gate, the title track from this album, released on Liquid Split Records Woo! Yes. Just, uh, just a few months ago. And really, really like this whole album. And that is a fantastic uh, track to kick off the album. Open That Gate, John England himself wrote this song, and we'll be talking about that in just a second. It's 924 here in the Music City. We got John England and Gene Pappy Merritt in the studio with us this morning here on Music City USA. It's our pleasure to have them, and we hope you're enjoying this kind of western swing music that we got lined up for you. Some of it on record, like Open That Gate. Some of them uh, tracks we're going to be playing, uh, we're actually going to be live music right here. Scary. On Music City <laughs> USA. <laughs> 924 in the Music City. Here comes Cowgirl Erin. She's got a little message for you. We'll be right back with some more conversation and some more country music after that. Well, did you know students who lack positive adult role models are much more likely to have self-esteem issues, struggle with academics, and or drop out of school? Well, that makes sense, Calgary. I think it does, but you can make a big difference. Volunteer with the Pencil Foundation, a local, education-based, nonprofit organization, and serve as a mentor to an at-risk youth. In just one hour per week, you can give a student the support he or she needs to succeed in the classroom and outside of school as well. For more information, call 242-3167 or visit www.pencilfoundation.org. Pencil Foundation, linking community resources with Nashville Public Schools. That's one of our public service announcements. Uh, service to the Nashville Middle Tennessee community is right here on WRVU Nashville, the voice of Vanderbilt University. How about another show that you can listen to here on 91.1? Yeah, we want everybody to tune in to Viva Vaya to oh. hear traditional Brazilian music filtered by the white light of ultra-modernity. From Macumba to Mangue Beat to Tropicalia today... Tune, tune in to Viva Vaya, Saturday nights from 10 to 11. That's Saturday nights from 10 to 11. Viva Vaya here on WRVU Nashville. You're listening to Music City USA. We're live in the studio here with Gene Pappy Merritt and John England from John England and the Western Swingers. And we just played Open That Gate, which is one of the songs that John England himself wrote for this album. Uh, exactly the same title of the album as well, Open That Gate. Now, mm -hmm. how did you come up with that song? Well, it's uh, what you call, it's sort of uh, my meditation on uh, 18th century philosophy. And, you know, it's one of those questions that uh, men and women have uh, thought about and worried about over the centuries. And I thought it was uh, time we had a Western Swing song about it. Oh, well. <laughs> it's very deep. When will the gate be open? Is, is, is basically the question it's asking. <laughs> well, I, 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 I can't believe that in all the years that Western Swing has been recorded, there hasn't been a song about that, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe there has been, but... Not that song, okay. <laughs> well, certainly not that song, and it's a good one, too. The, like you said, the nice. whole band gets uh, a solo on that track, and yeah. that's a nice thing. I think, you know, many times I've thought that Western Swing is about having um, some really nice, accomplished musicians put together and just showing them off. Yeah, it's you know, Picker's music, for sure, you know. Uh, uh, sometimes when we've had uh, different subs in our band uh, who have been uh, in working in country music for all their lives, they look at me about halfway through the night and like, are you kidding me? I get to play again, and I get to just play whatever I want, you know, <laughs> on the spot, make it up, and you're not going to tell me to play some simple little thing with everybody, you know. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things that makes our kind of music a lot of fun. And I always say this, but, you know, that's one of the, I think one of the assets of um, Bob Wills, for example, he, he always liked to show off his performers, and I think that's an important thing. He even would shout out the name of the performer 
uh, which is always wonderful to know exactly who's playing. Um, right. And I think that's very important in Western swing, as it is probably you know in other kinds of music. But in in swing music from the 1940s, 1930s, that that also happened and was a very important part of it. And it's very impressive that he could just remember all those names. He had a big <laughs> band sometimes. You know? <laughs> well, um, uh, Pappy, when uh, you also have written some of the uh, at least one of the songs in this album, and you know when you um, you've been performing basically all your life, yeah, just about. Uh, yeah. But when you write a song, what is it that you you're looking for in a song that you write? I don't know. You might say kind of true or close to home, you know. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I wanted to do something for my for my wife, and uh, so I wrote this song for her. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I've never written one about her or for her before, so I thought, well... I'm getting up in years, and I thought I'd better do something quick, you know, <laughs> so to speak. So I, I wrote this for her. Okay, well, you know, I was um, actually thinking of saving that for later, but since yes. you're talking about that song, we might want to play it right now, because be it's, it's a beautiful yes. track. I remember, you know, when you wrote that, that was a few years ago, maybe right. about a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And, yeah. and, and you uh, came to me and you said, I have this, this waltz here, but waltzes are not selling anymore. <laughs> well, that's, it, you know, it, not too much, you know. I mean, uh, I thought, at first I had it as an instrumental, mm -hmm. and John says to me, well, don't you put some words to it? And I said, well, I never thought about that, but I think I will. So I sat down and wrote the words to it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how it came about. Well, I remember you had actually talked to me about maybe writing the lyrics myself. Yeah, and, right. And uh, I'm sorry I never got around to doing that, but I think the way it came out is way better than I would have done it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. Well, and before you play it, I want to just say to my wife who's listening, uh, don't get any dang ideas. Oh, okay? uh oh <laughs> 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 well, right. you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah, you had to remind me. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> it's, it's it's here every year, John. So, <laughs> and of course, my wife has since passed, mm -hmm. and she passed November the ninth, and and uh, but I'm still grieving some, but I'm trying to get through it. Yeah. Well, right. Well, Pappy, you, you know, we we certainly want to play that song right now. And, you know, it's a song called The Waltz for Sue Ann. And, um, you know, I know that um, as we play the song, um, she's going to be somewhere listening. So let's do uh, it right, right now. I hope. I will let you introduce that song, Pappy. This is one I wrote called The Waltz for Sue Ann. Here it goes. was so soft and low I held to and tight with her blue eyes so bright and I told her that I loved her so That's so romantic she whispered to me as we danced way past three that I was her true loving man she gave me her heart and vowed not to part as we danced to the waltz for Sue Ann. Well, come on, Tommy, let's play it for the dancers. The full moon shone bright 
And it seemed just like heaven to me In her pretty gown of blue She said I love you I bet she did Then I knew that this was to be Down in old San Antonio We danced on and on Stars twinkled as only they can were so light as we remember that night when we danced to the waltz for Sue That's a good one, Pat. That certainly is a good one. The Waltz for Sue Ann, Gene Pappy Merritt wrote that song, and he's right here in the studio with us, along with John England. And you can find that song on the latest John England, the Western Swingers record, one called Open That Gate, Oh Sweet Mama. <laughs> Love that song, The Waltz for Sue Ann on Music City, USA. 934 here in the Music City, you're listening to WRVU Nashville. My name is Cowboy Anton, and right here to my right is... Cowgirl Aaron. And uh, visiting in the <laughs> studio with us this morning... John England and Pappy. Now, cowgirl, I think you had a little question to ask, right? Yeah, there. well, you know, we were wondering when you when you all make your albums and uh, you're deciding a new, on a new project to do, uh, do you try and get a real solid sound and stick with it, or or how do you decide how you're going to freshen up the new project? What what do you do you want to focus on just writing new songs, or do you like to stick to the old standards? Because you guys have a lot of original songs on this album. Yeah, that was one of our goals on this one, uh, to make it mostly originals. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, it ended up being 13 songs, and our 10 of them or 11 of them are originals. I right. forget which. T- uh, 11 of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's impressive because a lot of <clears> the <throat> music we listen to, even if it's you know contemporary artists, are, they're sticking with a lot of the the standards of you know country music or Western swing. So we, we thought that was really unique about your album. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Freshen it up. Yeah, you. You know, we go to some of these festivals with other Western swing bands, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it, it's one thing you can do to just to keep things more interesting is to play different songs than uh-huh, everybody else, uh-huh, you know, because uh-huh. uh, most of the bands are good, you know. Right. But uh, if we're all playing those same Bob Will songs, and uh, uh, Lord knows they're the greatest, but... Yeah. Uh, Put a little different twist on it sometimes. A little yeah. different twist, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah that's another one of the things uh, that is interesting about the album, as it was about the other two albums that you uh, had previously released, like the one in which you give you a tip of the hat to earn a stub, is that you rework the songs. And we think that's really an, an, an interesting thing. For example, uh, your version of Bring It On Down to My House, Honey, and this um, album here, a classic that Bob Wills did, and a lot of people did over the years, but you uh, put your own seal on it. And I think that's an important thing. Now, how do you go about reworking those songs? Well, you know, uh, Willie Nelson says in one of his songs, you can't make a record if you ain't got nothing to say. Right? <laughs> and uh, to me, uh, you know, you just do the song the way Bob did it or Merle Haggard did it or whoever. Uh, well, come on, are you going to do it as good as Bob Wills or Ernest Tubb or Willie Nelson? I don't think so, and not not in my book, you know. So you try to do it different, and then you got a chance to be apples and oranges and uh mm-hmm. Well, some folks like oranges, some folks like apples. Mm-hmm. At least you're not an a inferior apple, you know. Now, do, right. do, do people actually um, uh, receive well the, the new tunes? I mean, I, I, I have said, and I think in one of the little articles that I wrote about the, um, the, the, the new album on our uh, Which we website. Which a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it was my pleasure to do it because we really liked the album from the very first time we heard it. And so, you know, I wrote that little al- um, um, piece about it, and... Uh, one of the things is that the songs are new, but they sound classic, and I think that's an important thing. I do, too. It's got that good, solid, western swing feel to it, mm-hmm. even though they're new tunes, you know. Uh, I, I, li- I like it very much myself. Mm-hmm. I thought it was uh, we done a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, you you still find a way to showcase all of the different players, like we've been talking about. That's so important to Western Swing, uh, you know. So you get the whole group sound, but everybody's showcased, and I and I think maybe that's a big part of what keeps it sounding like that traditional Western Swing. 
Yeah, well, thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a lot of talented people in our group, and uh, Neil wrote two songs on there, and Tommy wrote two songs on there, and uh, uh, you they, wrote three. They I both think. they both sing a couple, and Pap sings a couple, and David sings one, and. Uh, Let's see. Well, Walter hasn't written or sung one yet, but uh, <laughs> I don't expect it to be too much longer. You know. Well, I mean? <laughs> Walter's good with those jokes that he tells. Oh, yeah. We, why, why didn't any of those make it on the album? <laughs> if you've heard his jokes, you know exactly why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you have in mind, though, when you are trying to write one of those songs that sound classic but are newer? Well, it's, it's just more the, a case for me of having an idea and then trying to fill in the flesh the idea out like any person who's trying to come up with something artistic mm -hmm. or, or semi-artistic yeah. would do. I think. Okay. Get the idea and build it, build on it and build around it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But do you usually have a you know specific song or a specific sound that you're trying to get at? Uh, no, you know, uh, I, I, you know, not that I'm the biggest songwriter in the world, but you know, to me, uh, especially if my mind will shut down for a little bit, maybe I'll start an idea will come to me somehow and then you just try to think of what fits with that idea uh, not as I didn't think oh open that gate I need to have a song that's, <laughs> you know sounds like uh, uh, you know uh, uh, stay all night or, mm -hmm. or yeah. something like that which of course it does resemble uh, but I, that's fine I don't mind it resembling that song you know what I mean uh, uh, yeah it's a classic hard to beat in our kind of music it sure is yeah John England and Gene Pappy Merritt's right here in the studio with us this morning discussing Western Swing and most of all discussing their latest album, Open That Gate, which came out just a few months ago. And we're, We have wanted to do this for quite a few months, and we're delighted that you all are here uh, with My us pleasure. in the studio. Thanks for visiting. And uh, thanks also for your live music that you're going to be playing. And uh, I think it's just about time maybe for another little song. And, oh, you know, right. we will let you decide what it is that you want to play. <laughs> Uh, you got your guitar and your fiddle mm -hmm. uh, ready right there, and you're ready to do one song for everybody out there here on WRVU Nashville. John England and Gene Pappy Merritts. After bragging about all those original songs, let's do a cover song here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our friend uh, Dot uh, told us, boy, she'd really like it if we learned this song, and I've about halfway learned it, and I know she's listening, so I promised her we'd try to do all it. All right. Hank Thompson, My Front Door is Open. Yeah. <laughs> My front door is open for someone like you Won't you come in for a while? My front door is open for someone like you Gee, but I like your style So come on in and let's get well acquainted I guess that you like me too my front door is open for someone like you. Won't you come in for a while? Go on, Pat. Yeah. Oh, he's making that up right on the top of his head. John England and Gene Marriage. John England playing that guitar and handling the vocals on that track and Pappy improvising <laughs> on that fiddle. Handling the vocals. Yeah, I said that right. You <laughs> I think they handled me. There no. <laughs> <laughs> My front door is open. That's uh, certainly not one of the 
best known tracks by Hank Thompson, but it's uh, truly a gem. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. It's, it's a good a song. song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the record of his record has uh, got this great reverb effect, that a ton of reverb that comes in on his voice, but just on the B section. And then it goes away, and then the next B section, it comes back in. Yeah. It's uh, like, uh, hey, hey, we got this new trick. Let's do this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My front door is open, and Hank Thompson, certainly one of the classic singers in Western Swing music. Right. He certainly brought Western Swing uptown with his classy sound, and he always had wonderful bands, and he was a great songwriter himself. Yeah, and you heard his band when they were at their peak, I think. Right, you? right. Were you out in Denver then? Yes, I, l- I loved their band. The- Hank Thompson and Leon McCullough. They had two of the best swing bands going back then mm-hmm. in the uh, mid to late 50s and, yes, in early 60s. Very good. I loved them. Well, Leon McCullough was one of those guys who, I think he played the Cimarron Ballroom. Uh, oh, yes. He and did, he, yeah. um, he was uh, big with Bob Wills, and then when he struck out on his own, he also yeah, he made it big. He out on his own, right. He played steel for a long time for, for Bob. Yeah. He was also a fine songwriter. He came up with important tunes like um, the steel guitar rag or the panhandle rag, didn't he? I think he wrote both of them. Hard to beat. Hard to beat right there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful music. Um, my front door is open, or maybe my front porch is open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all open. <laughs> <clears throat> I need more donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Pass them around. Need the sugar high here. <laughs> 944 in the Music City. You're listening to Music City USA here on WRVU Nashville. My name is Cowboy Anton. Right now, here comes Cowgirl Aaron. Okay, well, unfortunately, there is no magic to improving your credit. Oh, well. I'm sorry. No? I guess some people out there were looking for that little bit of magic. Well, that I've, been, I've been trying a voodoo <laughs> doll or something, you know, and it just yeah. didn't work. Yeah, well, you know, there's not really a credit fairy, you know, so your voodoo doll might not help oh, you either. Okay. But there is help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. Brought to you by the Consumer Bankers it's Foundation, free. the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights Education Fund, and the Ad Council. And also WRVU Nashville. That's our service to the Nashville and Middle Tennessee communities. At WRVU, the music of the past not only isn't dead, it isn't even past. Join Pete every Friday from 8 to 10 a.m. for Nashville Jumps, a heapin' helpin' of jump blues, oh, jump and jive, classic it. R&B, jazz, and early unbleached rock and roll. That's Nashville Jumps, the hippest radio show of 1953. With uh, our good friend Pete Wilson, we always like to listen to a show on Friday uh-huh. mornings when we wake up 8 to 10 on Friday mornings right here on WRVU Nashville. Nashville Jumps. Be sure to tune in because that is another one of the great shows that we have mm-hmm. here on WRVU Nashville. We got here in the studio Gene Pappy Merritts and John England. They brought along their guitar and fiddle. And uh, they're visiting with us, and we're really happy about that. Now, John, you um, moved to Nashville, I believe, around 1997. Why did you move to Nashville, and what, what brought you here? Why, what were you trying to oh, do? I was fixing to get rich and famous, Anton, just like <laughs> you. Cool. Like oh, well. <laughs> well, I'm not rich. I'm not famous. Um, you know, so it didn't work for me. Okay. Well, Pappy's famous anyhow. Right. <laughs> Infamous. <laughs> No, uh, you know, we had been living in the big city, and uh, I mean, bigger city even than Nashville, and uh, our daughter got to be one year old, and my wife said, you know what, I'd like to live somewhere a little more like what I'm accustomed to. So we came to Nashville, mm-hmm. and uh, I've just been getting richer and richer and famouser and famouser. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pappy, um, when did you move to Nashville? Uh, 19... 19... Six, the latter part of 60 or the first part of 61. Okay, well, that was certainly, you know, a fantastic moment to move to Nashville as far as music was concerned. And when uh, I got here, I think I was here about two or three weeks. And I have known, I had known Benny Martin before, and I played a little bit with him. And he saw me, and we, we played good together. We, he played the lead, and I played harmony fiddle to him. <clears throat> he said, I've got a television show. I want you to play twin fiddles with me. And it was on Channel 5, the morning show, the Eddie Hill Show. Oh, yeah. It was sponsored by Greenbrier Eggs and uh, 
uh, B.F. Myers Furniture yeah. Store in Goodlesville. Okay, those shows actually go a long way. Long they were way absolutely back, yeah. different from, you know, present-day TV shows. What, could you more or less uh, describe what those shows were like? What did you do on, on, on a show like that? Well, I played uh, twin fiddles with Benny. I played the second fiddle to Benny, and I sang some, and uh, I played some upright bass. Uh, Smiley and Kitty Wilson, who used to work with Ferlin Husky, they were on the show, and Smiley played a big Super 400 non-electric rhythm, and he was good at it, too. Mm -hmm. and, and they sang together. They were man and wife combination. She played upright bass. Well, when she would sing, I'd play the fiddle down and play bass while she sang. <laughs> and then she'd go back and pick up the bass, and we'd go again. You know, they... We had a lot of good pickers on there, too. I mean, old, famous pickers. The famous Billy Bird and uh, Eddie Arnold's a steel guitar player, Little Roy Wiggins. Uh, and like I say, Benny and me and Smiley and Kitty and uh, a guy named Fred Shoemake, who was a cousin to uh, uh, who's a big studio man that passed away. Owen Bradley. Owen Bradley. They were, he was cousin to Owen Bradley. Uh, I'm trying, and I had a drummer from Ohio. I can't think of his name anymore. Stan, Stan Holzer, that was his name, uh, and some other pickers. Uh, Eddie Arnold's nephew played drums too on the show. Jerry Arnold, mm -hmm. who played uh, drums on the morning show at uh, WSM for a long time. Um, but I, all of them, except me and Jerry, are, have passed away. Every one of them was on the show have passed away, except me and, and Jerry. And you mentioned the um, the um, uh, host of that show was Smiling Eddie Hill. Smiling Eddie Hill, yes. He also made some records under his oh, own yeah, name. Oh, yeah, he played mandolin, and he had, he had some swingy records, uh, swingy-type records. Uh, he came up here, I think, out of Memphis. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the mandolin player. Uh Kirk. Seemed like his last name was Kirk. But I can't remember anymore because it's been too long. Well, I don't guess it was Eddie Kirk. No. Uh, it might not have been Kirk, but it sounded like Kirk. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a famous mandolin player. And Eddie, uh, they come up here together, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Eddie was a famous DJ. He, had, he was on WSM when the, in the, the evening show for years. And he gave that up, and he was on television, Channel 5 television, with the morning show. Uh, it was called uh, Country Junction. Oh, okay. That was the name of the TV show, I believe. Well, those TV and shows... I was fortunate enough to, to be on the ground floor and play Twin Fiddles with Benny. Well, those, those uh, old shows really, you know, did a lot for... Popularize, uh, popularizing country music and bringing it to more audiences uh, around the South. And soon, <laughs> next thing you knew, it was on Coast to Coast TV, like on Port Wagner show and stuff. So television certainly did um, do a great deal in bringing country music to the people yes. back in nineteen late 50s, early 60s, and throughout <coughs> the 70s. Sold a lot of eggs and furniture, too. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And we, we even had uh, uh, Connie Smith on. Mm -hmm. And that's when she made her famous, you know, uh, Once a Day song. Mm -hmm. We had her on our program as a guest. One the Whispering and, Bill Anderson and, wrote. And mm -hmm. uh, somebody was holding one of her children while she did it, you know. Oh, gosh. It was, a, it was in the basement of the Allen C. Tower. That's where Channel 5 used to be and whenever we had the show. And then they moved it to James Robertson Parkway since. But but I well remember that. She, would, she had... Uh, that's during the time that the TV show was on, and she was on as a guest, and she sang once a day. That's Connie a, Smith. That's what a fantastic a treat that song. Would have been. It must have been Seeing really a treat to be right there. Coming in and playing great yeah. music. Well, John Inglis just got uh, one more donut right there, and uh, we're fixing to play another song from Open That Gate. These old stories make me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next song we'd like to play, since we're talking about old stories, um, it's gonna be uh, we're going to be playing a song that actually talks about and mentions several of these old-time country music players, and it's one that uh, Tommy Hannum wrote. 
I really like the songs, like sort of a 4 4 shuffle kind of style song that um, we really enjoy. Uh, and that'll give us a chance to ask you a little bit about Tommy Hannum. How did you meet Tommy, and, and, and how could you describe his, his, his sound or, or him as a person? Well, I tell you, even before I came to Nashville, I had Tommy's name and number, and I'd never met him, but a mutual friend said, Hey, you get down to Nashville, try to get a hold of Tommy Hannum. And about the first month I was here, I met him. And uh, he was, uh, you know, always nice to me, and uh, I always tried to get him whenever I had an opportunity to have a steel guitar player. And uh, it took us what, maybe, not a year, but it took us about seven or eight months before we could rope him into the Western Swingers. <laughs> but uh, we did, and uh, uh, long as we let him off when he needs to get off, we've kept him in the band. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, uh, I, I really like his, his, his way of singing as well, and uh, uh -huh. I especially like his version of uh, the Beach Picking Time in Georgia that Isn't that nice? he does. That's um, on our first CD, yeah. That's uh -huh. on uh, Swinging Broadway, the first CD of John England, the Western Swingers. Uh, and this one, Tommy Hannum wrote, and you can find it on John England, the Western Swingers, Open That Gate. We're going to play the song right now, one called She's Coming Home With Me. <laughs> Music City, USA, here on WRVU Nashville. John England and the Western Swingers, the vocals handled there by Tommy Hannum. And it was Tommy himself who actually wrote that song, She's My Gal, She's Coming Home With Me. And that's one of the songs that, uh, this is very typical in country music, where, um, you know, the, the legacy of country music is really important to, to the style itself. And so there are a lot of songs within country music that, uh, celebrate the singers from the past and the big stars, and this is one of them. Uh, mentioning people like Ray Price and Ernest Stubb and uh, Charlie Walker, I believe, because he says Walker. I'm not sure if it's Billy or Charlie, but uh, in any case, uh, it's a fine song, kind of four four. Um, well, not not really four four uh, shuffle, just about. It's not really. Um, I I kind of thought it was, but then I, I was listening to it and I thought, well, uh, it's not really four four it's shuffle. A two beat, yeah. <laughs> but it's a it's a it's a fine song right there, you one that Tommy it. Hannum wrote, uh, plays Let's steel guitar with John England, the Western Swingers, and one called "She's Coming Home with Me." You can find that song on John England, the Western Swingers. Open that gate, a record that uh, just came out a few. Uh, months ago, and we've been featuring here um, on uh, WRVU Nashville songs from this album uh, ever since it came out. Uh, both Cowgirl Learn and myself really enjoy it, and we're happy to have here in the studio with us John England and, and Gene Merritt. And Anton, wouldn't you say that since you've been playing that album, your ratings have gone through the roof? Oh, uh, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, I, I, and that don't you feel better in your both, but in your body and your mind? Well, I do. Uh -huh. I, See, I certainly do. Yeah. But, you know, the problem... And haven't you noticed that your personal income has more than doubled since you started playing <laughs> uh, uh, What do you mean? Uh, I, I, I hope you're not talking about payola or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly I don't say that the ratings have, uh, have gone through the roof because they never have. So, oh, come you know, on. That's, right, that's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. But, but you know, if... if Cowgirl, if, you're going to have to get him to <laughs> plutter and to play alone. I, I know it, but I'm sure we've got a really excited audience out there today. Well, yeah, we're really uh, happy to have uh, John and Gene here, and, you know, Pappy right there, he has his fiddle. Cherokee Shuffle. Oh, okay, all right, well, he's just letting me know what he's going to be playing, and we're getting close to the top of the hour here. It's almost 10 o'clock here in the Music City, so it's time for our top of the hour instrumental now, and John England's going to be playing guitar on that, and Pappy's going to be playing on the fiddle. Great song, one called the Cherokee Shuffle. Here we go. Yeah, that's LL 
CJ. Oh, LLCP. Ladies love cool Pappy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl Key Shuffle. Pappy, where'd you learn that song? Uh, I learned off of Tommy Jackson. Mm -hmm. It was a great fiddle, fiddle player, player and a hold down fiddle player and backup fiddle player for a lot of Ray Price records. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was one of the greatest fiddle That's players in fact in Nashville. Tommy, Tommy Jackson, yeah. That's called the Cherokee Shuffle. Right. Hadn't heard that song in a long, long time, so we're really happy you <laughs> revived that one for yeah. us. Right here on Music City USA as part of our um, top of the hour instrumental feature that we always have around 10 o'clock here. And this time it was a treat because it was not just a top of the hour instrumental, but it was a live top of the hour live. instrumental. Yeah, <laughs> live in the hide. That's like a recorded <laughs> instrumental, but with just a few more mistakes. You're yeah. listening to WRVU Nashville. Yeah. Here on WRVU, um, Music City, USA. My name is Cowboy Anton. Right here to my right is... Cowgirl Erin. All right. And it's uh, actually uh, quite a warm morning here in the Music City. Overcast skies, <laughs> 63 degrees out there in Nashville and the Middle Tennessee State region. We're expecting a high temperature of about 69 degrees. It's going to be stormy, though, um, in the afternoon. Uh, overcast skies right now, but then some storms coming your way. And uh, overnight, also overcast, guys, and around 39 degrees is going to be the low, so it's not that bad. 63 degrees in Nashville, Tennessee, and, uh, and expect a high of about 69 degrees here in Nashville, Middle Tennessee State Region. That's the weather update from the Vanderbilt Weather Service. Well, we got John England and Gene Pappy Merritt here in the studio with us, and uh, we're uh, talking about some of the wonderful music that they've put on this record right here. I have it in my hand. John Engel and the Western Swingers open that gate. Well, John, how can you get this record? Well, I got enough, but uh, <laughs> those of them out there listening who don't have enough copies of it, it's easy to do. Ernest Tubb Record Shop's got it, or of course you could order it online at about a half dozen places. The best one, of course, is westernswingers.com if you want to get right. that. Which you ladies would like that, because that website's got pictures of our fiddler, Pappy, <laughs> in oh, his yeah. underwear. Oh, Go yeah. check that out. Well, That's quite the photo. We've, we, we've seen that. That's, you know, that for a while that was on our... Uh, screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> Anton, that's that's more for Aaron. I hate to break. <laughs> well, <that>. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't the one to put it there. So, <laughs> but of course, uh, also uh, every Monday night down at Roberts Western World, we'll have a couple copies. We could, uh, well, for the right price, we'd let go of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit more about that website. What else do you have in there? And uh, uh, besides, you know, Pappy in his underwear. Well, you know, uh, it's hard to get past that, really. Uh, uh, once you, you know. <laughs> Uh, but there's pictures of all the Western Swingers. There's audio clips. You can listen to little bits of uh, pieces from all three of our albums. There's some reviews of the of the records. Uh, the I guess they're discs, say ain't records. Well, I call them records anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what else have we? Got? Well, you know, what I'm excited about finally we got one of those uh, lined up with uh, PayPal where they can peep folks can just click and order copies of the CD and I can mail them the very next day or copies of any of the CDs and so that's nice to have that option on there too. And if you uh, get a chance to go to youtube.com you'll also find some clips of uh, John Engel and the Western Swingers playing there. That's is, Was that from uh, Wichita Falls? Uh, some of them are. Some folks have posted some videos of uh, us playing at Roberts. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A couple or three of those maybe too. I always wish those uh, the sound was better on some of those but uh, at least you can see how pretty and handsome all of us are. <laughs> <laughs> One of our chief assets is a musical aggregation, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Well, I tell you, you guys are such fun to watch live. We really enjoy going downtown to see you on, you know, Monday night, you know, whenever we can find time to do it. And it it's makes a, a big impression when you get to hear Western Swing live. I mean, it's great on the record, but when right. you get to see the band really yeah, working together, it's, it's, it's impressive. It's fun music. Yeah, it and is. And we have fun doing it, mm -hmm. you know. And, and you get to see all of the sort of... Um, the work that goes into not just playing the music but working together and talking to each other to get to get everybody showcased i mean what does it take to sort of lead a western swing band and how is that different from other types of bands that you you might have worked with in the past well as long as you've got the right musicians it's just a pleasure and a joy mm -hmm. but uh it is you know what a leader of a band band leader is is the person who's willing to do more work for the same money you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a joke 
but you know the thing about Western Swing is too, uh, Bob Wills. He, uh, you know, and, and well, yeah, no, Bob really is is my role model for leading a band. And he would point his fiddle bow at somebody, and he'd say, "When I point my fiddle bow at you, right. I want you to do something to knock my hat off." Mm -hmm. right. And uh, boy, if Tommy Hannum didn't take that advice to heart, nobody <laughs> has, because he's always trying to do something different. And Neil too is always. Yeah. Uh, so really. Uh, I'm more of a, a traffic cop uh -huh. than uh, a person who dictates really right. everything that's going to happen. Uh, I try to make sure that not too many pileups happen in the intersection. Right. In <laughs> that could get tricky. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, you, you certainly do that. One of the things that, you know, Pappy was saying that uh, Western Swing is dance music, music to have fun, right. and you certainly uh, do put that across in your uh, life. Um, Appearances and you, you know, you might think you know more about uh, music and being right there playing the music itself. Um, you may think, well, you know, I made a mistake here, I made a mistake there, but you know, uh, that doesn't really come across mm -mm. Uh, to <laughs> to the audience who, like us, we're just you know music lovers and not we don't know how to play the guitar, or we don't know how to play the fiddle. But um, there is certainly um, a, a, s a sense of of of, of we are here to play and have fun so that the people out there can have fun yeah. too and that's very important you know uh, a fella last uh, I met out in Texas last summer uh, was uh, doing a, is, is doing a documentary on Bob Wills and he said to me what do you think you know really made him special and to me when I listen to those records I, I, I feel and hear a spirit coming to me it's Bob's spirit he and not not to get supernatural but I mean I you can hear his spirit, I, not that he's communicating me from beyond the grave, although in a way he is, you know what I mean, because his music is there. But his band had a certain vibe or feeling or a pro, a, a spirit is really what it was. And, you know, all those guys, uh, we've met a bunch of them and love them, and they, you know, have had reunion bands and what they call a ghost band a lot of times since he died. Uh, and it's good, and I love it, but of course it's not the same, because... Uh, even if they're playing the same songs and it's the same guys playing the same instruments, it doesn't. There's just something about him that gave that spark. And uh, anyway, so this fellow was asking me, "What what do you think?" And uh, Bob, you know, a lot of musicians. And of course, to be an accomplished musician, you got to concentrate on your craft and learn to play your instrument or learn to play your style of music. Uh, uh, but Bob was going beyond that, in my opinion. He he went beyond the technical aspect of music and into, I'm talking to those people just beyond that speaker, you know, and uh, I want to communicate, give them something of myself that they can't get anywhere else. And uh, that's what I try to keep the focus of our band. You know, we want to make the music good as we can, but also remember that it's it's something else. It's about communicating a certain... Uh, you know, love or acceptance or joy and happiness to those people because really that's what it's about. It's not about, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to play the flat nine against this three dominant three chord because that's a hip sound. It's more about, you know, want to give something to somebody that makes them go, yeah, you know, that's how I feel about it too. Or like you're that's playing, how I like to feel about just it. Just like you're playing to them personally and mm -hmm. communicating to him on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. Right. And boy, when Pappy uh, spreads his legs and uh, puts that bow to the strings, he can really lay into it. And uh, that's what I love. I'll tell you, you know what I'd like to interject here, if I might, and just, since we're on no, WRVU, <laughs> how about if we invite all the young people that go to college here that may be like swing music or trying to get into swing music, we'd like to invite them down mm -hmm. oh, sure. every Monday night, you yeah. know, uh, the young Ladies and gentlemen, down to uh, Roberts, Monday nights, 6 to 10. That's a great idea because, yeah. you know, we've seen people, you know, catch that energy that you all have on stage when they go out to dance on the dance floor. And I think, um, you know, a lot of younger people might not be familiar with Western Swing, but if they went downtown to Roberts and listened to you all play, it would be no time before everybody be out on the dance floor having fun. We do a little other music, too, throwed in mm -hmm. here and there, mostly mm -hmm. Western Swing, but we do play some traditional stuff and mm -hmm. and I know some of the uh, Vanderbilt students they like traditional music and we'll give them a little dose of swing music yeah. throw it in <laughs> mm -hmm. we'd like to invite them to come down yes well that's quite an experience for sure and you know one thing you know is Cowboy Anton will not be dancing because I'm no dancer. Oh, come on. But I love <laughs> listening to the music and I always have uh, now, a lot of fun. Now you're gonna be dancing 
this summer, right? Oh yeah, there's a certain day in which I'm going to be dancing for sure. But uh, I don't right. know. I, I don't know whether. That's right. <laughs> well, that's a promise. You're, you're dancing it, it, on our wedding. It's day. a promise. I, I've, I've, I've promised <laughs> that uh, many a time, and so we, we'll, we'll certainly be doing that. <laughs> But yet, we might not be able to get them to dance with the Western Swingers. <laughs> and well, where, is, uh, where is the uh, happy occasion going to take place? Well, actually, it's... Well, who, who's, who's handling the interview here? <laughs> <Is it> you, <laughs> yeah, we're it getting you? interviewed now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be downtown, too. It's going to be at the Country Music Hall of Fame. Well, how apropos. Yeah, right. that's we're good. excited about it. It's gonna yeah, be it's awesome. hard a good band yet. <laughs> well, we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on that. <laughs> it's going to be on July 18th, uh, on Saturday uh, evening, mm-hmm. uh, right here in town at mm-hmm. uh, the Country Music Hall of Fame. We're really excited about that, and, you know, we've been preparing this for about a year now. Yeah, and I think, really, we might have to get uh, your bass player to give us a few more dance lessons. Hey. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Exactly. That's dancing with David. Our yeah. designated dancer, David Spock. Now, how did that come about? How how did you decide, or how did he decide that he wanted to do that part in which, you know, you have David uh, come down and dance with the ladies? Well, he'd been bugging me to do it for years and years, and uh, <laughs> 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 uh, no, David loves the swing dancing, and uh, <clears throat> you know, of course, our kind of music. When we go out to Texas, everybody does the same dance, a two step mm-hmm. to. Uh, well, they don't do it to the waltz, but they would if they could figure out how. Yeah. Everything else mm-hmm. is a two step to them, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, David is especially good at the swing, and you know he can go to the jitterbug type stuff or or keep it more basic. And uh, we were playing a gig on the banks of the Ohio River up in uh, Henderson, Kentucky. Right. Uh, and I guess it was uh, three or four years ago, and uh, uh, we were the only band on the bill. And it was, uh, it was it's a fairly long night uh, up there with really just on a big stage, being the focus of this festival thing. And uh, I don't know how it actually happened. Maybe a gal was wanting to dance and didn't have a partner, and we sent him down. Or maybe the—I think the audience had a uh, uh, overwhelming uh, uh, ovation to get me to play the upright bass because they know that I'm so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. But uh, if the, if they're going to get to dance with David, I get to do something I want to do too, and that's uh, <laughs> try to play the bass for three minutes. You know. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's something we we do. We've we've tried to keep as often as he'll let us do it. Is the have a chance for all the ladies who'd like to dance at least to get one dance in in the night. Mm-hmm. We send him down the dance floor and let him take turns with as many as can stand it. Right. <laughs> and, you know, s- some of them pass out from excitement and, uh, you know, the heat and everything, yeah. but uh, <laughs> not too many. We build him up real good, too, before he goes down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a great, he, which he is a great swing dancer. Uh-huh. You know. He's a nice guy and a real fun personality. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, that's always been a popular part of ever since we started doing that thing. And coming up, he's going to be singing one of the songs here on the record. We'll be uh-huh. we'll be playing them just uh, playing one of those just uh, a little later. In fact, uh, we might be doing that to close the show because that you know that last track on the record is I think very much apropos again for <laughs> for that um, to 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 end the show. And I think uh, Cowgirl Aaron was one of those lucky people who got to dance with David. I was, point. although I tell you, it, he did a lot of work because I, I really don't know how to dance. It was fun. So if you don't know how to dance and you want to give it a shot, go down on Monday nights and ask David David to dance. All right. Uh, yeah. All right, John. Well, next song here uh, we're going to be playing. we got John England and Gene Pappy Merritt here in the studio with us, two of the Western Swingers that John England put together a few years back. You said six years ago? Uh, well, or eight the, years? The band, it's seven and a half years, and uh, we got David and Tommy uh, wrapped up into it about, uh, what do you say, just about seven years yeah. now. Yeah. The next song we want to play is one called Right There With Me. How about that one? What? How did that come about? Mm, thank you. That's just a cute little. I thought it was, I think it's a cute little song that came to me. Uh, it reminds me sort of of a Roger. I mean, some of the, the lines in it are a little Roger Millery, or I like John Prine a lot. If y'all like him, mm-hmm. uh, uh, my wife thinks it's too silly, but I like silly stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we certainly like it too, and you know we we want to feature it right now here on Music City USA. Well, I'm going to let you introduce that, John. I thought we just did. Well, just, you know. <laughs> just, say the just, name just, one more time. Right there with one me. More time. There yeah. we go. Music City USA here on WRVU Nashville from John England, the Western Swingers' last uh, latest album, hopefully not last. 
Open that gate and the title of that song, written by John England himself, right there with me. You really like that song, and thank you. It's you can tell your wife is certainly not a silly song, at least not to us. <laughs> all right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, we're gonna have some live music coming up, but first of all, here's Cowgirl Erin. She's got a little message for you, and then we'll be right back with John England and Jean Pappy Merritt. All right. This is an important one. How can you help when a child is abducted in your area? By getting free Amber Alert text messages on your cell phone. Then you'll be ready to alert the authorities. To sign up, visit wirelessamberalerts.org. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council. And WRVU Nashville, it's our service to the Nashville and Middle Tennessee communities here on the voice of Vanderbilt University. And while you're getting dressed or driving to work or still trying to wake up, infuse yourself with some Shalom Nashville every Tuesday morning from 6 to 8 a.m. Uh, heard right here on your favorite radio station, 91.1 FM. Be sure to listen to that. Another good show. It's a, an early rising show, but it's worth it. That's Shalom Nashville on Tuesdays from 6 to 8 a.m. All right, and now back to Music City, USA. My name is Cowboy Anton. Right here to my right is Cowgirl Aaron. Hey and there. Right in front of us, they're uh, getting ready to play another song. And they were going to do a different song, but uh, our listener friend Randy called in and he wanted uh, Pappy to sing a specific song. Mm -hmm. One that uh, the great uh, Hank Thompson did. And I've, um, right. Well, Hank Thompson did it, but it's actually, um, I believe, a Hank Panty song, right? Yeah. One that, um, you know, I really like, and I almost forgot about this song, but I really like it when, when Pappy just steps up to the microphone at Roberts and does this song. One that uh, the great Hank Panty did, by the way, one that is called... Won't You Ride in My Little Red Wagon. Right. <laughs> My little red wagon I'd love to pull you down the street And I bet all the kids will be jealous When they see my playmate so sweet Hold tight till we come to the hilltop Oh yeah, We're gonna roll down the other side, you and me Won't you ride in my little red wagon for you are my sweetheart to be well why don't you prove it with your fiddle then <laughs> Side you and me. Won't you ride in my little red wagon? For you are my sweetheart to be. Yes, you are my sweetheart to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John England. Gene Pappy Merritt's. Pappy on the fiddle and handling the vocals on that one, a classic from the Hank Penny songbook, Won't You Ride in My Little Red Wagon. Love that song. Thank you. 
Well, Pappy, where did you learn that one? I learned uh, years ago off of uh, probably an old, if I can recall, an old 78, uh, uh, a King 78. In fact, I've got it at home right now. I just found it the other day. I ran on it. <laughs> I meant to tell John about it, and I'd forgotten. That's so on the King label. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's Hank Penny. Well, I know Hank Penny recorded that yeah, several times, yeah, so he very yeah. well may have recorded one of those versions for King Records. Yeah. A 78, that's you mean it's from 1978? <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe 1878. A 78 RPM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the one of those wax records. Yeah. You. Thick. <laughs> Hank Penny was quite a character. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah Hank Penny. I saw Hank in person with the great steel player friend who I got acquainted and, and worked with the great Curly Chalker oh yes yeah, passed sure. away about four or five years ago mm -hmm. one of the greatest steel guitar players in the world for, for as a matter of fact um, and uh, I first met Curly in Las Vegas and that's where I saw Hank Penny Curly was playing steel with Hank Penny and he had two big amplifiers behind him while he was playing it sounded so full and so great yeah well hank penny was was, was quite a guy always yes, trying was. to big make it new yeah. make a difference and he had a uh, different and he had really like you say pappy a very big band and yes, he and, and he was too. once again a you know a band leader's band leader that's what he was he had you said john one time that uh, and i read this online somewhere and you know tell me if if, if, if it's not true but you, i think you said the Western swing is mainly about personality, that it is like jazz. Now, um, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, to me, you know, of course, and uh, uh, I like to think that because our band is pretty strong on personality, too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true because, you know, Bob Wills, Hank Penny, Hank Thompson, right. Spade Cooley, all those guys had nothing if not personality. Right, and you know, it, it's uh, uh, maybe a little bit diminishing trait in today's world. Uh, in the old old school, in jazz and blues and uh, country music, you had to have your identification, right? And the guys would say, you know, you're good, but you ain't got no identification, meaning that you didn't have a personal identity that you were always strong on. That's why Ernest Tubb always had his guitar players go on every right. record, because he wanted his record, he wanted that first note to come up and the listener to know, here comes the Ernest Tubb record, you know. Because that's his signature lick. Right. right. As if his singing wasn't distinctive enough. You know? <laughs> right. right. Uh, and that's what, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's Gene, if, if he doesn't sound like, if he doesn't do any, if, if, if there's only, if you reduced, if you knocked all down of his other virtues down, Pappy here, at the end of the day, he is so Pappy, you know. And that's to me, is a real as a person and as a uh, artist that's what you're aiming for you know mm -hmm. miles davis was so miles davis you know what mm -hmm. i mean ray charles you couldn't get any more ray charles than how ray charles was and uh, especially in a town like nashville where a lot of us are trying to freelance to make a living as musicians and you know if you want to freelance you got to be versatile mm -hmm. and uh and i also think that with all the electronics that we use to make records nowadays uh you can sometimes you can boil a food so long that it loses its taste. All the ingredients start to sound the same, taste the same, you know. And uh, so that's one of the things that really knocks me out about Pappy here. And uh, hopefully we can keep that in our band and make it exaggerate it more in our band, you know what I mean? And it's true. When you heard a Hang Williams record, you knew that it was Hang Williams is going right. to be singing. And when you heard, a, uh, like you said, a Ernest Stubb record or Eddie Arnold, you know, you, you knew that Next thing you knew, it was going to be Eddie Arnold coming on and singing on that record, just mm -hmm. just from the very few first bars, you know, on the yeah. on the record, and that's that's very important. One thing about you, Pappy, that I really like is, you know, your kind of uh, fiddle playing uh, sounds really, really fresh after so many years of of, of playing. How how did you uh, learn to play the fiddle? It's it's very well known, for example, that Roy Acuff learned to play the fiddle after. Um, uh, he couldn't play baseball anymore. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how, how did you take up the fiddle, Pappy? Well, it's kind of a long story. Uh, he wanted I, to meet more girls, I think. No, <laughs> no I was playing guitar then and, and uh, a little bit of mandolin, and we used to play for square dances. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a, a fiddle player, never forget him. His, his name was Virgil Hicks. 
and uh, he was a real good fiddle player, and, and uh, I played guitar with him, he played fiddle, and of course I learned just by listening to him, and, but he drank a lot, you know, he was kind of like a wino, oh. <laughs> and he would come to the job pretty liquored up, and he'd play maybe two or three songs, and then he would pass out. Oh. And, and so they, we had, and I played the mandolin, and we had no fiddle. So my dad said to me, he said, if I were you guys, he said, I wouldn't put up with that. He said, why don't you get a fiddle and learn to play it yourself, and you won't have to depend on him. There you mm-hmm. go. And that's how it came about. So I was about 14, I guess, then. And uh, so I bought this fiddle where it was stolen here in Nashville, it, you know, later. I bought it off of a, a World War II vet who, who brought it back from Germany. And he was getting married, and he wanted to get some money together to take up housekeeping. Mm-hmm. And he heard I was looking for a fiddle, and he brought it around, and he says, well, I got a fiddle here. I said, well, what do you want for it? He said, what do you think it's worth? I said, well, gosh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm thinking you got a deal. Just get to the punchline where you paid very little, right, like yeah. you paid for everything else. <laughs> so he looked at me a little bit, he says, and I just so happened to have a $5 bill in my pocket. That was it. Oh, yeah. It was very poor. And he said, do you think $4 is too much? This is a true story. This is true as true as it can be. And I said, no, I'll give you $4 for it. So I gave him a $5 bill, and he gave me a dollar back. And it had one or two strings on it, no case, no bow, mm-hmm. just the fiddle. Mm-hmm. And it had geared tunings on it oh, yeah. instead of the wooden pegs. And uh, it was a great fiddle, a German fiddle he brought back from Germany. And I had it and fixed it up and learned to play on it. Do you, do you still have that fiddle? I don't have it. It was stolen in Printer's Alley. Oh. Uh, I was working for a company, and I had the company car. And, I, I mean, during the day, I'd work for this company. And, of course, I played at night everywhere, you know, on television, whatever. And I had it in the back seat. I had two fiddles. One of them was an eight-string fiddle that Benny Martin and I put together because he had one, and him and I made one for me, and I still got it. Oh, I still got one. I made another one. It was stolen. It and my my original fiddle, both of them in a double case, was stolen out of Printer's Alley out of a little Ford Falcon. They jimmied the door open, and it was on the back seat floor, so that's standing up like this. Took it. I never got it back. I turned it over to the police, but... I knew I'd never get it back. So I went down to Broadway in a hawk shop and bought another one. And that's the one you're playing that I loaned to you. I bought it at a hawk shop and <laughs> fixed it up. And I played it after I lost the other one because we were still on television. Well, I got to say, that fiddle doesn't sound too good. <laughs> <laughs> but it may be me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the fiddle you're playing today is the one I bought to place the one, my original fiddle mm-hmm. that I learned to play on that was stolen. And, of course, I've got a lot of other fiddles since then. I bought, I think I've got 14 of them all together. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've collected them and fixed them up. And, well, and, and that uh, first one's That's how I special. learned to play and started to learn to play. And, I, of course, I could play mandolin. And man, the fingering is, a, is the same. It's just the bowing, you know, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and all that, you know. And there's no frets, you know. But, but uh, I was playing mandolin then. I had a real nice Gibson A model with a kind of an oval shaped hole mandolin it was a good one too mm. really good i bought it for 35 dollars uh-huh see what i tell you right <laughs> back then <laughs> all, all, always a, a gibson deal. mandolin a model what like a Very nice. with a with a oval shaped hole and was mm-hmm. it was like